This is the Section 8.2 MathCast. It contains two lessons. Students will now formalize the two types of sampling error first seen in Section 8.1 and calculate the power of a test under specified conditions. Problem 827 introduces the terms Type 1 error and Type 2 error using the classic metaphor of a court trial. After this problem, students should realize that, in most cases, Type 1 errors are more egregious than Type 2 errors. Type 1 and Type 2 error are then formalized in a math notes box. Because a null hypothesis can never be accepted, we can only fail to reject it. That makes a Type 2 error erroneously failing to reject a null hypothesis, which is a triple negative. You might want to be ready to provide an explanation to your students for this. Problem 830 lays the groundwork for the more complicated discussion of power in the next section. Students should realize that lowering the significance level will increase the probability of making a Type 2 error, but should also realize that calculating the chance of making a Type 2 error in the instance of a court trial is not really possible. Section 822 does include the calculation of the power of a test. Problem 837 does a complete walkthrough for the calculation of type 2 error and power. This is a time-consuming, complex, multi-step process, and you want to be able to be ready to provide encouragement and perhaps scaffolding where appropriate. The technical description of power and formula are provided in a math notes box within the section. Problem 838 uses an e-tool to help illustrate how power, type 1 error, and type 2 error are connected, and the effect of changing parameters such as alpha, sample size, and effect size, and allowing students to reason that increasing sample size is typically the most appropriate way to increase power. You want to make yourself familiar with the errors and power e-tool before the lesson. If you're teaching an introductory class, a general understanding of increasing power as being able to maintain confidence while reducing the chance of a type 2 error, along with some simple strategies for achieving increased power, is probably sufficient. Because when running any test, confidence is desirable and power is desirable. To maintain high confidence while minimizing the chance of type 2 errors. This curriculum has presented many alarm system type problems, generally to illustrate probabilities associated with rare events. However, if we look at an alarm system as a hypothesis test, it clearly shows the need for both confidence and power. We would want a high level of confidence in the system, so if we heard the alarm, we knew that it would be something of concern. We would also want a high level of power to make sure that no intruders come in undetected. Section 8.3 covers the difference of two proportion tests and contains extra practice for this chapter.